Today, I'm going to tell you about my experience taking the electrical engineering PhD qualifying exam when I was a student at Stanford. It is a tale of pain, sadness, laziness, and procrastination. Plus, I'll give you some calls advice at the end. Today, I'll be taking a trip down memory lane to tell you the story of when I took Stanford's electrical engineering PhD qualifying exam. The E equals for short. Now this video might be very interesting if you're curious about what a quals experience is like. And in the end, I might throw you some uh, words of wisdom if you are taking quals. Understand that qualifying exams are very different from one another depending on where you take it. But some of this advice might be useful to you anyway. For those of you who don't know, the quals is an examination that you take in your early years as a PhD student. Typically your first, second, maybe your third year. If you take it sometime after that, it's kind of weird and uncommon. And the quals is basically a rite of passage. It is an exam that gauges whether you have what it takes to continue on with your research PhD program. Now the format of the quals can vary depending on what department and what school you're taking it at. It could be a written exam, it could be an oral exam, and oral exams can also range in formats. Sometimes they test your general knowledge in a specific department or field, and sometimes they test on the specific research that you're doing. Oral exams can be presentations in front of committees of professors. They could also be one-on-one -on -one meetings with professors. Now these quals exams do kind of suck because it's like, I just got into this program. Why do I have to take another exam that could basically kick me out of the program? Thankfully, most PhD quals exams uh, have close to 100% pass rate. However, at the time when I took Stanford's EE quals, it was known as this infamous boogeyman of an exam, this evil, evil test. And that's not to say that EE quals is easy right now, but there was a time when Stanford's EE quals was just so notorious, people knew about it when they were applying to the program and professors knew about it, students knew about it. And I think what made the EE quals particularly scary was because there was a 50% pass rate and it might have been even worse before I took it. And with Stanford's EE quals, you basically had two chances to pass it. If you fail twice, then you essentially get kicked out of the program. Now there are little caveats. You could have a professor petition for you to pass or to take it a third time, but that's not really something you wanna count on. So the thought of finally getting into the school of your dreams and then having this test that could basically kick you out sucked. When I was an undergrad, before I even applied to Stanford, I knew people who chose not to go to Stanford's EE program specifically because of quals. And there have been many blogs online written about Stanford's annoying EE quals. I remember on visit day in like April or May during our senior year in college, when we all finally found out we got into Stanford, during this entire orientation, everyone was basically asking about quals. It's like, yo, you all just got into this school. Do you have to rain on everyone's parade? There were people on visit day who had already decided they were going to Stanford and they were basically already studying for the quals that they would be taking the next year. So that's how afraid everyone was of the quals. Thankfully in recent years, I'd say probably in the past two, three years, Stanford E department has made massive changes in the quals format to number one, improve the pass rate of the quals exams. And also they changed the formatting of the quals to become a better gauge of your research ability. So what was EE quals like when I took it? Every year, there was a single week in January, probably one or two weeks after the winter break, when everyone in the EE department will be taking their quals during that one week. Every EE student is assigned to take the quals one day of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, etc. And on the day of your quals, you will basically be assigned to meet with 10 different professors for 10 minutes. Now that's not so bad, Content is not really the issue. Again, it's the pass rate. During the 10 minutes where you meet with a professor, they can basically ask you anything they want in their field. And the way these 10 professors are assigned to you is that two weeks before, you would basically list out the preferred subfields in EE that you wish to be tested on based on your preference. So you'd list out maybe six or seven subfields and out of these subfields, they will pick out four of these subfields and they will rank them based on, again, your preference. So I got assigned signal systems as my first choice. And then I had circuits and then physics and then digital. For your top field of preference, let's say signal systems for me, you get three professors who are assigned to you who will test you in that field. And then your last preference, they would give you at most one professor. And then the total of these professors would be 10. And during the one-on-one -on -one meetings with the professor, they can ask you whatever they want in that topic. And their questions can range from exam questions to like riddle questions that you might see on a homework, or they could give you like a box or a circuit and be like, tell me what this does. It's pretty much up to them. And each year you basically get one chance to take this exam. There's probably 170, 180 students who take it every year. 
And for each student, they basically take all the scores that the professor has given and then add up all the scores of the 10 professors. Once all the student scores are calculated, they probably just rank them all. They draw a line and the students above the line pass and the students below the line fail. And again, that line's probably drawn around 50%. So in EE Quals, when I took it, they didn't actually ask you any questions about research. It's solely general knowledge. So what do students typically do to prep? So probably the most straightforward way to prep is basically to look at past exams. I think they sell them at the bookstore and they're also available online. So I think a lot of people in the summer before they started graduate school, they would basically study for the exam and then take it their first year in January. So you had probably six, seven months to do it. I didn't really do that much studying because, you know, it's my last free summer before having to do research every single summer after that. So I was basically traveling and chilling. Once school started though, I took a few classes in the electrical engineering department with the hopes that they might prepare me for quals. I took a signal systems class and also a probability class and maybe a few others. And those actually turned out to be really, really good decisions. The E department also suggested that we form study groups so that you can practice presenting to one another. So I joined two different study groups and I try to have the two uh, study groups cover as many of the fields that I would list out in my preferred references when we're being assigned our quals examiners. So aside from meeting with my study groups to go over past quals questions and taking my courses and doing research, I didn't really have time to spend for anything else. Or I guess I was too tired to really spend energy and studying quals on my own, which probably isn't like the best decision ever. But this went on. Before I knew it, it was like three or four weeks before the week of taking quals. That's when things started to hit me. And I was like, crap, I'm taking quals soon. This kind of sucks. I should probably take it a little more seriously. I started spending a little more time on my own, looking through past courses that I've taken, looking through past course notes, looking at textbooks, stuff from undergrad, and also from the graduate classes that I was taking. But obviously there's like a vast amount of information and it's impossible to go over in like three, four weeks. And truth be told, I don't know if looking at past exam questions are actually helpful. It might give you a flavor of what kind of questions the professor might ask as well as their notation. But yeah, three weeks before, I was like in kind of panic mode. But I did consider maybe just like delaying the quals to like my second year because you basically only get two tries, right? So I figured if I push my first try to second year, I'll be a year smarter and then I can take the second time my third year and then I'll get more time. I even talked to my parents about it, but then they were like, dude, stop being a wuss and just take it. If you fail it the first time, like who cares? Just take it again the second time, like whatever. And I was like, okay, whatever. I guess I'm taking it. I guess I didn't need much convincing, like whatever. There was so much information, all I could really do was kind of like skim through the notes. If I saw a concept I didn't quite understand, I'll probably like do a question on it. I was basically in review mode. So I made sure to get a good night's sleep the day before my quals. I was probably thinking, eh, I probably should have started studying earlier. So there was a little bit of stress, but I'm also of the mindset of, you know, just do your best at this point. There's nothing you can do. I had my 10 different professors already assigned to me and my fields already chosen, as well as my schedule. So I think my first quals was actually at nine and my last one probably ends around four or five. The 10, 10 minute sessions are basically scattered throughout the day and then you have breaks in between. I won't bore you with too many of the details of my quals experience. I'll try and give you a summary of what happened during that day. Basically, I had a few one-on-one -on -one sessions that went really, really great. I had one that went pretty bad and the rest were all kind of average and I kind of don't remember. It's all kind of hazy, probably trauma suppression. And the quals was pretty much what I expected. I had a few questions from individual professors that I probably expect in a final exam. I even had part of an exam that was a little hands-on. So there was one exam that went bad. It started off like, okay. I think the first question, the professor basically handed me a circuit. And you know, I TA for a circuit class when I was an undergrad. So I kind of knew how to like put it together to, to get what he wanted. But then afterwards, he asked me about this physics term. He basically wanted me to give the name of a concept in physics. I didn't quite understand that that was the answer that he was looking for. I was basically just stuttering and bumbling around. Like I had no idea what I was doing. And after several minutes of confusion, he basically just gave me the answer. He's like, have you heard of this term? I won't say what it is because I don't want to reveal who the professor was, but yeah, it went badly. So that was actually pretty traumatic. But one of the pieces of advice that people gave us is if you do badly in one round, don't let it negatively impact you in future rounds. So I took that to heart and I continued on. One of the quals professors was actually the same professor I took a signal systems class with that fall. So taking that class turned out to be like the best decision ever from a quals perspective. The question turned out not to be so bad. And because I took his class and I understood his notation and I went through concepts similar to what he was asking, I could figure out the question immediately. 
I'm pretty sure that had I not taken the class, trying to figure out the notation and answer the question would have taken a lot more time and I might not have gotten it right. So I was very thankful for that. And since we finished early, he's just like, yeah, so uh, how's the rest of your day going? And then we just talked. So that was chill. There was another interesting session of note. The one professor that I was actually concerned about taking the exam with turned out to be a really, really nice guy. Because when I got him, some people were like, oh, he's really stern and strict and he can be kind of intimidating. So I was like really worried. But then when I actually got into his office, he was really, really nice and polite and encouraging. His question turned out to be some probability, like a riddle question, possibly something I'd see in a homework. And we sort of had a back and forth uh, interaction on like how to answer the questions. I would give him my thoughts and kind of talk my way through the question. And I think I was like one step away from getting the answer exactly, but he seemed pretty happy with the result. And he's like, yeah, this is great. If you do this well in all your other exam questions, uh, you'll be set, you'll, you'll pass for sure. And I felt so good after that. So uh, that, that was nice. So I think by five, when all my exams were taken, I was pretty much exhausted from doing test after test after test. Uh, yeah, there were breaks in between, but you know, it was still mentally draining. But after that, I pretty much just vegged out. There was a basketball game. I was like watching Celtics highlights. After that, my family took me out to Black Angus for a steak. They live pretty close to Stanford, so I was very lucky. I actually took the exam on the Friday, the last day of the week when everyone was taking quals. So at Friday night, they hold an annual electrical engineering prom. They call it the EE prom. It's actually a pun, look it up. And it's basically a prom for like electrical engineers. So yeah, I mean, I was really there for the food and the drinks. And then after that was done, it was late and I went home, I played video games till 4 a.m. in the morning. So if you average out the entire day, it was like a meh day. It wasn't a bad day. And after quals, most students go through what is called a post-quals slump. It's basically like senioritis, except for quals. Like the week after, I basically just didn't feel like doing anything. And I was like behind in my classes because I didn't do anything the first week of class because I was studying for quals. And that actually turned out to be a big mistake because the rest of the quarter, I was basically playing catch up. And at the same time, I was still like in a senioritis mode or post-quals slump mode. But yeah, a week later, the results came out and, uh, you know, I passed. I was like kind of surprised, but I was like kind of like, yeah, well, you know. Again, I think there are, yeah, around 170, 180 people, 50% uh, pass rate. And I think I was like 25, 30 students above the threshold. I wasn't like a rock star at the test, but you know, I passed by a comfortable margin. But you know, like what more could I have expected? I almost took it the second year. Now that the story's done, I guess I could give you some quals oral exam advice. Granted, quals formats can vary from school to school and department to department, but you might hear something useful. My first piece of advice is get a good night's sleep, especially the night before your exam. I know that staying up late can make you feel like you're working harder so you feel better about yourself, but I don't think it's worth it. Your brain is just going to be like mush and slow and you need it to be sharp when you're entering this exam. You need to be thinking. Another piece of advice, when you're studying for say an oral exam, Make sure to simulate the environment and mode of communication of the exam. For instance, if your exam is going to take place in a classroom with a chalkboard or a whiteboard, try and practice your exam in a similar type of room and actually write out your answers on the whiteboard or the blackboard. That's basically what we did. And that's why we held study groups so that we can write on the whiteboard in front of other people. Another point, when you're talking to a professor during one of these oral exams, make sure to constantly be talking about your thought process, even if you don't necessarily know the answer. Don't just stand there and like churn your thoughts silently in your head because they're constantly gonna be grading you. And if you stand there silently, they have like nothing to go on. Like if you explain to them your thought process, then they'll get a better sense of how to grade you. And if you're lucky and they see where you're going with it, they might give you hints to help you along if you're stuck and you might get extra points for it. So make sure to demonstrate your thought process, okay? That's how they're grading you. They wanna see how you think. And I know it's hard, but try not to waste any energy gauging how well you're doing as you're taking the exam. You should try and spend as much of your energy and brain power and brain cells figuring out how to answer the questions being asked by your professors. If you're constantly trying to look at their faces to determine whether you're doing well or not, it can kind of slow you down and throw you off a little bit. Not only that, different professors might have different cues that could kind of throw you off. For instance, I had a friend who thought he did terrible on one of his quals exams. Like the professor had a poker face. He didn't look very happy as he was answering the questions. And there was like no reaction. He was very stern. He was not very nice. So he thought he did really badly. And that turned out to be one of his highest scores. And had he let the professor's reaction distract him, it might have turned out a lot worse. So be careful of that. Also, if you have an oral exam where you have to meet many different professors or have different rounds of committees, don't let your performance in one round, especially if it's a bad performance, negatively impact your future performances. You should treat every single round as 
just a new game. Just wipe your mind clean and forget about how bad or how good you did in a previous round. Compartmentalize. If you're like me and you kind of waited till the last minute to really start taking the test seriously, you should still just do your best with the time that's given to you, okay? Forget about the past, just move on, just do what you can the months, the weeks, or the days leading up to the exam. And go in there with as much confidence as you can, stressing about it is just a waste of your time and energy. So yeah, Stanford EE Quals was uh, not particularly fun. After people take it, we realize maybe it's not the worst thing in the world, but we still don't like that 50% pass rate. Thankfully, as mentioned earlier, Stanford EE Quals is no longer the way it used to be. They've since changed the pass rate from 50% to 100%. I think they did that by reducing the pool of PhD students that can actually take the Quals exams. Because before, it was much easier for EE Master's students to transition to the PhD program. So you had a larger pool of students wanting to take the PhD Quals exam. But now because they made the pool of students taking the Quals smaller, they can pass almost everyone while keeping the department size manageable. They also changed the format, so rather than it being one-on-one -on -one exams where you're answering general EE subject matter, students are actually presenting their research or what they hope to do in their research in front of a committee of professors. And the committee will choose whether or not to pass them or make them take it again. And considering how PhD Quals is supposed to gauge how well a student can do research, I would say the change made was appropriate. Anyway, that's it. Like and subscribe so you can see more videos, because you know, what else am I going to do? I hope you found this video helpful, useful, and interesting. And uh, have a nice day.